we're stuck. <laughs> Thank you. This is a story on how everything goes wrong as two casual photographers try to capture the beauty of Switzerland. So much adrenaline! In fact, if I were to right now title the video, We Almost Died in Grindelwald, it wouldn't be entirely clickbait. Alright, so we're in quite a bit of a pickle. Bye. My name is Jason Vong and I'm Vivian and we're a pair of former shelter suburbanites now traveling digital nomadic photographers exploring the world at our own pace. And Switzerland marks the fifth country on our journey. You know the meme expectation versus reality? When applied to traveling, 9 out of 10 times the reality of the destination is nothing like your expectations. But Switzerland? Switzerland is different. You are literally walking on a page ripped straight out of a princess fairy tale book. The perfect place for budding visual imagery dream catchers. And the one sole reason that we never realize why Switzerland is so high up on our bucket list is actually because of the Matterhorn, which Southern California has a small replica of located in the happiest place on Earth, <laughs> Disneyland. But it got us thinking. Man, wouldn't it be great to see the real Matterhorn one day? Yeah! And just like that, we packed our bags and headed off to the Great Swiss Alps. I just certainly hope that we will be able to see this majestic, near-symmetrical, pyramidal peak of a mountain during our time there. Our journey begins here in Zurich, to primarily stock up on groceries before heading off to the Swiss Alps. As you know, Switzerland is notorious for being one of the more expensive destinations to travel to. Transportations, lodging, spacious, I like it, restaurants, mm. excursions, dark chocolate, and even short gondola rides can quickly add up. Ooh, they're running a sale. So it's a good thing we found an Asian supermarket where we can live off of cup noodles, shin ramen, and powder packaged miso soup for the next two weeks. Despite being the largest banking hub for the world and running one of the busiest train stations, Zurich is actually a quiet city for the most part, but booming with a lot of photography elements. Plentiful in European-style buildings, churches, bridges, and various public transits. All while surrounded by saturated blue water and in the distance, mountainous landscapes. It's also incredibly easy to explore the city by foot, which is highly recommended. Perfect for urban and street photography lovers. Oh, and if you get thirsty, there are plenty of fountains providing clean water around every corner. Now, sunset is always the best time for capturing any visuals. You'll get the best lighting, the richest warm glow, and any subject that gets bathed in this golden light just makes for a great shot. When the lights come on, you suddenly have more elements to play with, especially moving ones. Buses and trams are a staple of intercity travel here in Zurich, and I want to get them brushing by this iconic view of Zurich at the Quay Bridge. Key Bridge. And it looks kind of cool, but what if I can get Grossminster through a window of a bus? And the results? Not too shabby, right? I uh, had to channel my inner Professor Hines for that one. Check out our street photography series. We're currently at Quay Bridge where we get this nice backdrop of Zurich. We got beautiful lights here. You can do some long exposure with your tripod. Key Bridge. All right, so here's a bit of a tip for you guys. Don't be like me where I'm trying to put the lens cap back on this thing and then it just popped out and then it just dropped into the water. But like how one would toss a coin into a wishing well, let's just pretend I uh, toss the lens cap into the lake of Zurich to appease the Swiss photography gods to bless us with amazing weather for the rest of our trip. The very next day, we travel an hour out of the city to see a flag on a rock. But not just any flag on a rock, but the one sitting right in front of the most powerful waterfall in all of Europe, Rhine Falls. So I always tell people it's better to photograph the subject of interest rather than beyond the subject of interest. So we head back up to the train platform or right above the water. And suddenly, Vivi and I hear a loud explosion. And 
right off into the distance, we see a huge black smoke form in a cone shape. Do you see that? Vivian starts freaking out. And I, on the other hand, I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's a controlled explosion. Like, you know, how there are controlled fires. Turns out the Vong was wrong. It's not a controlled explosion, but actually a gas cylinder of a circus wagon blew up. Thankfully, no one was hurt. But having been distracted, it did make us a little late to get the shot of Ryan Falls. We're finally here. Now, unfortunately, the sun is setting behind the mountain, so we're not getting any of that sunset. I'll see what I can still get, but I think we missed it. Even though sunset is usually 9 p.m. during the summer times, the high hills of Switzerland means the sun disappears faster for some areas. So, uh, your boy needed to hustle. Ooh, yes, this is it. This is it right here. For this particular trip, I knew I would be photographing some kind of waterfall. So I brought my only two video NDs with me, a three and a four stop. Time to crack out the tripod. Now, NDs are neutral density, and these types of filters add extra darkness to your image. And for this, we want to smooth out the waters. And I say video NDs because I only ever use them for videos. And generally, you don't ever need them to be that strong for video. However, for photography, when you want to smooth out the water during the day, that's when you're gonna need a really strong one. And if you're a serious landscape photographer, you will wanna use a Grad ND to darken the sky without darkening your shadows as well. But I'm not shooting for Nat Geo here, so I double stacked my only two video NDs, maxed out my aperture to F22 to get the proper exposure, and applied my own gradient and Lightroom, and boom! Again, ain't no Professor Heinz, but uh, you can call me Dr. Vong. Perhaps now my parents would be proud of me. Early the next morning, right before we disembark to Grindelwald, we make a quick pit stop by what is aptly named the Camera Store. Not to be confused by the two famous Canadian duels. No, not them. Them. Couple nights ago, we lost a lens cap at Quay Bridge. Key. And not just any lens cap either, but a very obscure diameter one. 40 and a half millimeter. Not just 40, but and a half as well. Hello. As we walk into Swiss TCS TV, I start praying that I'm able to find a replacement, even if it's a generic unbranded motto. But the camera store is not just a camera store, but also three quarters of a stationary store. I am beginning to worry that I'll have to start covering my lens with a sticky post-it note. Luckily, hidden in plain sight right behind a tower of postcard lies bins of used caps. As I dig through the bin labeled 39mm, I'm out of luck because it's the closest to 40 and a half and nothing. So I figured I could just pick up a 49 millimeter one. It's much more of a common diameter and I was adapting a 49 millimeter filter on the lens anyway. And wouldn't you know it, they also don't have any 49 millimeter in a bin labeled 49. And just when I start to lose hope in this bin basket, I literally found the exact thing I'm looking for. And a Sony branded one at that too. And thankfully, I didn't have to pay a premium for the brand name. Six US dollars. Talk about good luck. Woo! Just when luck is seemingly on our side, our trip to Grindelwald starts to become otherwise. And this is the beginning of how everything went wrong in Grindelwald. The Swiss photo gods giveth and the Swiss photo gods taketh. It's some gnarly thunder. Did it catch that? We are at the Interlaken Ost station. It's been a long day of traveling in trains. Because our train was delayed, we actually missed the connection from Bern to Interlaken. And because of that, we were also late for this next train. And now we just have to wait another like 20, 30 minutes, but it's not bad. We're kind of like surrounded by the mountains and the nature right now. And just kind of nice to kind of change from the city that we were in earlier. Train delays are such a common issue we've been running into here in Switzerland. Why the other day to Rhine Falls, we got stuck in a train for 45 minutes and had to learn the hard way that Europeans don't believe in air conditioners. They don't blast AC in Europe. No wonder it's so hot in here. Blast it! With no way to open the window on a hot summer day, Vivi and I just sat there getting cooked. Ah yeah, posted about it on Twitter. Follow me. With this delay to Grindelwald, we are likely not going to make it for sunset. If you're here for a limited time, make sure to factor in train delays and weather unpredictability. 
get here as early as you can, especially if you need to get to a certain point where you need to get the shot. The next day for us is also very gray. Not exactly turning out to be a good start for us at Grindelwald. Or should I say, Grimdelwald. But instead of accepting defeat, we decide to make the most of our situation and go tackle some of the best excursions Grimdelwald has to offer. Going on a toboggan slide has always been a dream of mine. A toboggan slide is kind of like a roller coaster, except you're on a go-kart sled. And you're riding through breathtaking, colorful, alpine, grassy mountain scenery. Ever since seeing these types of viral videos on YouTube back in college, I made it a life goal of mine to someday be on one myself. Bye. And today is my lucky day, because right above the town lies Finchdeg with a 736 meter long toboggan run. For something like this, I really recommend an action camera like a GoPro with a chest mount. Actually, it's mandatory because it's incredibly useful to enjoy activities like these while keeping both hands free to pilot whatever vehicle you get on. Gotta go fast. And trust me, you'll be going on a lot of excursions out here in Switzerland that requires both hands and attention. But for the next hour, we experience pure joy. Here we go. It is as fun as those viral videos make it out to be. The ingenuity and the design of it just makes you question how something can be so simple, yet so fun at the same time. The exhilaration immediately lifts any concerns we have, and we forgot about how great the weather is. Thank you. And as we're lining up again, waiting for our next go, the clouds start to break, revealing a part of the mountain that we're on. Without much of a thought, I grab my phone and snap a photo, and it ends up being one of my favorites out of this entire trip. And that's the thing about Switzerland. There are a lot of exhilarating excursions for you to enjoy, but also keep your eyes peeled, because there's a great photo around every corner. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. With the sky beginning to clear up, revealing the true beauty that is Grindelwald, Jason and I decided to head out to Fierce early to secure some great shots. By the way, it is pronounced Fierce. And yeah, we both thought it was first at first as well. Upon arriving, the area is already primed with so many breathtaking photo opportunities. Luscious wheat fields, majestic mountains, and cows. Lots and lots of cows. Fierce is a spot with lots of excursions that fit a variety of comfort levels. For adrenaline junkies, there's parasailing and mountain biking. And for us safe suburbanite folks, there are nice trails for elevated heart rate hiking. Aw oh, yeah. Oh honey, look at those cute cows. They're so adorable, so calm and pe- Oh. Oh my god, it's- It's devouring a baby! Huh? Oh god! Okay, maybe hiking and looking at cows isn't all that safe. Regardless of time though, the nature side of Switzerland always seems to have the best lighting no matter the time of day. Always a decent amount of sun coverage shining at these landscapes. And I'm honestly kind of mad because most of the photos that I've been sharing from this trip on Instagram are literally from my phone. Like, do we even need good photography gear anymore? Just look at the details, look at the sharpness, look at that reach, just ugh. But if you're stubborn like me, yes, bring your fancy camera with a versatile lens. Personally, I never felt I need anything wider or tighter than a 24 to 70. And trust me, there are instances that bring a good camera still triumphs over the photos that your phone can take. I'm not in denial, you're in denial. Now, we do recommend coming early because some of these excursions have quite a long wait. For example, here we're queuing in a two hour line for this flyer ride. And it's the most nerve wracking 120 minutes of my life because all you hear is just screaming. The flyer is a zip line with an 800 meter drop where you're going 84 kilometers per hour. That's 52 miles an hour for a human to zoom down a mountain with nothing but a baby chair strapped with a spaghetti string harness. Yeah, they make you sign a liability for this. 
As I begrudgingly wait in line at Wild Vivian and grab some epic drone shots, I begin to realize I had forgot to put on sunscreen, seeing as how we thought it was going to be cloudy all day. And it won't be the only thing I would forget this day. Finally, we're up next, and my anxiety starts to kick in as we're watching the two girls in front of us get strapped in. While I joked about the baby chair and the spaghetti string harness, the crew actually takes their time to secure you in, making sure your time in Grindelwald Fierce isn't going to be your Grindelwald last. But them taking their time just fuels into my anxiety. As I take my seat of others before me, it starts to become abundantly clear that it's already too late to back out now. Already in the chair, I wait for the anticipation. And without a warning, I... Didn't hit the record button in time. I didn't get a screaming out of the top of our lungs. I stood in line, burned my skin, listening to the agonizing scream for two hours. And for what? For nothing. What a waste. Like, how do we ever prove to the world now that we've done this scary ride? All of this built up just to fall flat. So a gentle reminder, folks, to always roll your cameras early. <laughs> Ironically, we come to find out that the flyer is probably the best and one of the more safer rides in Fierce. This glider one, eh, that's okay. Thank you, thank you. But our last activity that day isn't as thrilling as we would have hoped. Last activity for today. Yay, okay, we have 20 minutes to get down to the next gondola. Uh-oh, why? Or else we're gonna have to walk home. And this is also one of those activities that we've seen from a video and thought, hey, that's the coolest thing ever. This activity is the only reason why I bought this bike mount. Get in there! Little did we know, it is the most dangerous ride of them all. Yeah, I'm going! You see, if you're not careful, you can literally go off the cliff. Stay close to the edge. The employees there all warned us to keep both our hands on the wheel and not to use our phones. I hate these rocky ones. Now, despite following the rules and keeping both hands on the wheel, I still nearly drove off the cliff several times. It starts to become increasingly hard to enjoy the nice sunset when you're fearing for your life while rushing down to catch the last gondola of the day, or else it's camping in the woods for us. So that's why I said to bring a GoPro, because we can enjoy the nice sunset later. So much adrenaline! The mountain carting one is dangerous! Luckily for us, we were able to catch Last Gondola back to town. And we got rewarded with that rich golden sunset glow bathing what is formerly known as Grimdovald. So after not descending down to our deaths, we decide to ascend the closest thing to heaven the next day. Of above the clouds, where snow day can exist in the summertime, the top of Europe, Jungfroyok. And here's where the magic really happens. We're made for each other. Now, typically, whenever I leave an area, I would always double check around me to see if I accidentally left any loose gear or items behind. It's a general habit of mine. And right as we're getting off the train into this Arctic tunnel, right underneath the seat that I was sitting in, I find a lens cap. And not just any lens cap, I kid you not, but another Sony branded 40 and a half millimeter cap. This is weird. Like how? Out of the hundred seats that we could have chosen to sit at, I sat in the one above this lens cap. And I remember leaving this lens at the hotel, specifically choosing not to bring it on this day. At first, I'm thinking, maybe I never put the lens cap back on this lens after one of our shoots. It could happen, and it just fell out of my pocket. But no. Because later that night, I return to our Airbnb and find the lens covered with the lens cap that I had purchased from Swiss TCS TV. So now I have two? Is this a glitch in the matrix? Am I in a simulation right now? <gasps> or did the lens cap that I dropped in the river just come back to me? A mystery. 
A mystery indeed. Switzerland fantasy magic. That's the story that I would tell myself that this lens cap magically returned to me. Thank you, photosless gods. Unfortunately, our trip to the top of the world ends up being short-lived. Altitude sickness got the best of us, and rightfully so. Jungfro is over 11,000 feet above sea level. Now, it is pricey to get up here, but I would say it's pretty worth it if you love landscape photography and you love flag photography. <laughs> we were hit with nausea, shortness of breath, and turning pink. It got so bad that it wrecked Vivian until the next day. Now, if this were to happen to you, there are rest centers located around the area where you can take a chill. But for the most part, we go get our top of the flag photo and peace out. I was a little bit worried about if I can fly in this area, but it says drones between 0.5 kg and 30 kg, so it should be okay. Oh yeah, you're a true biker now. Oh yeah! The following day, we are still feeling the effects of elevation sickness, so we decided to take it easy by going on a nice bike ride to Lake Bakaupsi and have ourselves a nice picnic. We were wrong. What we didn't realize was how rough the terrains were and how much of an uphill the initial hike was. Being the shelter suburban folks that we are, we thought, Oh, an electric bike will be able to climb this no problem. We were wrong. For $50 a person, we decided to rent an e-bike and still thinking it would be an easy ride up. Wrong. We were also prompted to rent helmets to which we replied, nah, it'll be an easy 20 minute bike ride. We were wrong. So not only were we not used to changing gears on the bike because again, we were former shelter suburban folks, the hardest bike ride we ever been on is literally a flat surface to Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. We messed up our bike chains. Probably not a good idea. Now this is the part where you might think I would say, thankfully a nice family of fit hikers told us of our wrongdoings, fixed our chains for us, gave us good guidance on how to properly ride an e-bike, like wearing a helmet, we were on a smooth ride to Lake Bagalpsi. You are wrong. Everything about that is true except the smooth ride. Press hard when you change the level. Low gears on the left. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. You wrong. don't have a helmet. I'm scared. So please. So just take care. We yeah. give it another so go much. for what seems to be another two miles. But in reality, we never left the starting area. You can't do it. So we call it quits, admit defeat, and proceed to walk the bike back down the hill to return it. And this is the part where I was hoping the store would give us a partial refund because we were only gone for 30 minutes. I was wrong. So not only did we still have to walk to Lake Bakaopsi, but we also paid $100 for this hilarious lesson to give to our other fellow shelter suburban folks that you need to have some basic mountain biking skills. In the end, we hiked to Bakaopsi in one piece and the view is absolutely gorgeous. Lunch time. Even though there are a lot of people there, the lake still felt very serene. And for some reason, all the pain and all the suffering just made the view look so much better. Seeing this majestic view of Balkopsi just made us even more excited for our final leg of the trip, seeing the real Matterhorn. But before we do, we have one final excursion, parasailing. Now, nearly every opening shot I've seen on Switzerland on YouTube always starts off with this view of Lagerbrunnen, which funny enough, you don't actually go to Lagerbrunnen for, but to Vengeance. But instead of trying to use the same drone shot as every other YouTube video out there, I decide to do one better. Be my own human drone. <laughs> Oh yeah, Alex, I mean, I don't know. Baby, go fly, Let's have some fun. Woo! Oh my god. Yeah! Oh my god. Oh. We're gonna head to our next location now. Yeah, Jenna! Zermatt. Two and a half hours. It would have taken two and a half hours to get from Grindelwald to Zermatt. But you know how the story goes. Delays. Our journey ended up being five hours. But we're here. 
Whereas Zurich is quiet and Grindelwald is spread out, Zermatt is on a totally different vibe. The town is closely packed together with restaurants still bustling into the night, a luxury that goes amiss in the other two towns. But with only two days left and our morning already wasted, we immediately trek to Stelisi, which is like a Bakaupsi, a lake for a similar view, but with of course, the famous Matterhorn. Now the hike to this lake is incredibly easy, way easier than Bakaupsi. It's just a 20 minute hike and you'll be here. Mm, unfortunately for us, Matterhorn is a bit shy today. Constantly hiding its peak with a small little fluffy cloud that won't leave its peak, damn you. I love clouds, but not when they're covering the mountaintop for too long. And I am this close to ending the video and just titling this photo, matter clouds. But I hate to end this trip and this video with such a downer. After what would be hours and no end in sight of the cloud coverage, we begrudgingly start to head down, strategizing what to do the next day if we still don't see Matterhorn in all of its glory. I looked down and gripped my lens cap, praying to the Swiss photo gods to come through for me one last time. And they answered. That evening, the clouds start to clear out, revealing the Matterhorn. Just in time for sunset. And we debated about going back to the same lake, but the gondolas were stopping soon. So we decided to capture Matterhorn elsewhere, scouring around for the best vantage point, until we come across this area by a construction site from a nearby hotel. Now we are here an hour too early. We're trying to get a little bit of that sunset glow on the Matterhorn and get these buildings here lit up. Clear sky, clear conditions is the best that we can ask for. But the magic is just beginning. There it is, Matterhorn, with its near perfect symmetrical pyramidal peak coursing down on Zermatt. That perfect kiss of glow from the sun as it sets. As the lights come on, flooding the town of Zermatt and still retaining that sliver of sunlight, illuminating Matterhorn. And right there, I knew that's the shot. Look at how beautiful it is. So after every trip, I proudly display my best photo as my phone's lock screen. And with the latest iPhone's dynamic wallpaper, the peak of Matterhorn pokes out ever so perfectly out of the clock. And just like that, our trip here in Switzerland is perfect. So yes, Switzerland may be expensive, but if it's the price to pay for preserving this beauty, then I absolutely don't mind it at all. Our journey has taken us to so many wondrous jaw-dropping views. It has also taken oh us to body-dropping excursions. However, these are the stories that I can attach to to these photos, forever memorializing not only our pains and sufferings, but also the joys and happiness we've experienced. As we close out this video, we gently remind you to always keep your camera rolling, keep your chin up high despite your circumstances, and if all hope seems lost, toss a lens cap to the Swiss photo gods and their shining ray of hope will lead you to your Matterhorn. Thank you for watching everyone, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.